What up artists? My name is Dwayne Jones. I'm the creative director and founder of a lifestyle brand called Art Pays Me. This is the Art Pays Me podcast and I'm passionate about finding ways that people like you and me can make a living for ourselves off of our creativity and you know maybe we can make the world a better place at the same time. Let's get into it. Yo, welcome to Art Pays Me. This time we have Dorico Simons on, and uh, we're gonna get into some social justice chat, some youth stuff, and try to get to bottom to the bottom of like you know our thoughts on some of this uh, basically bullshit that's happening to black people in North America. So, welcome, welcome. Man, I'm uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, happy to see uh, where the course of this conversation is going to go because there's a lot of a lot of BS happening right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so what exactly do you do? Uh, so I um, I work with youth and communities. Uh, uh, I also um, I also do have a, a, an MED in counseling. So uh, I am a nationally certified uh, therapist, um, cool. and uh, that is kind of. Uh, avenue i'm slowly starting to uh, venture venture into are you able to take patients yeah so like i i like i actually am uh able to do all that it's just uh right now me just sort of clearing the way uh for myself so that i can actually um uh, give give people the time that they would deserve and rather than me being sort of rushed so i'm just kind of trying to clear some things out of the way so i can make space uh, for that to start happening okay so where did you actually grow up? Uh, so I grew up in, uh, I grew up in the pubs. And so public housing community, um, uh, for, I guess, people who are from Halifax, it's close to Halifax shopping center, but, uh, kind of, uh, one of those, uh, enclosed communities is one way in. Uh, well, there's actually two ways. There's the front, front way and the back way, but public housing community, uh, known as the pubs. Okay, cool. So like, what kind of a child were you like this is art pays me typically i interview Mm -hmm. artists but it's not necessarily that like do you consider yourself creative in in any Mm -hmm. way man yeah i do uh because there's a lot of situations a lot of times where i had to be uh i had to be creative um or i didn't have a choice to be creative uh like if 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 there's only a certain amount of food or no food um and you kind of you know, you got to make a way where there might not be a way. Like, you got to be creative in that situation. Um, if, you know, you don't have enough money for something, uh, you got to be creative in terms of ways to either get that money or make that money enough. Uh, and then other, you know, other stuff, like I do kind of dabble around in, uh, uh, like, writing, like, spoken word and those kinds of things. Um, and so I wouldn't say that I'm a creative, but I, I, I definitely uh, do have a creative side. Um that uh, uh that I do enjoy and it's 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 used as an outlet. Right. And you were a hooper. You played you played ball when you were at the Monk? I did, yeah. So I played basketball, man, from elementary. Uh first team I played on was called uh Needham Explosion. Um okay. and so like when I think back, like that might not have been the best name for a team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> given uh uh you know health explosion explosion history. But uh yeah man I played uh Basketball right from elementary all the way through to uh, to university. Mm, nice, nice, man. Like, uh, I just got to. They just opened up the basketball courts recently here, so I just hit up hit up the court in my neighborhood and took some shots, man. I've just been been hurting, not being able to it's, get out. Oh, definitely, man. Basketball, basketball for me was like. It was like, it was almost like the therapist I could, I, I didn't have because yeah. I mean, therapy is expensive. Um, and so like, it was like a therapist that I could afford. Um, and uh, without even like consciously doing it, but like I would, if something was happening like at home or if something was happening to me, like I would just go play basketball. Um, mm-hmm. And when I'm doing that, um, there's really like nothing in the world that, um, that can affect me or bother me. Right, right. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit. The first time, I became aware of you and you might not remember this, but it was at the fabric of the DNA fabric of our DNA fashion show at the Mount. You were yes. actually a speaker there. 
And yes. I, I was a designer, but I was like, when you spoke, I was behind the scenes and didn't really like, I was, didn't get to hear what you said, but like everyone who did speak, um, hear you speak, thought that you were, you're really impressive. And so sure. I, I kind of kept you on my radar ever since then. And like, you've been, you know, you, a part of informing different organizations and, you know, Future Roots is one of those things that I, I saw that you were part of. And like, can you explain to me what Future Roots is? Yeah, I was like, well, you remember that Future <laughs> Roots. Yes. So, yeah. So <clears throat> Future Roots, uh, I get like we came out of the idea that um, seniors living in specifically North End Halifax, um, and folks who may have mobility issues may not be able to do the general uh, outdoor upkeep of their home, like mowing the lawns or stacking wood and those kinds of things. And then when I was working in Mulgrave Park uh, with Phoenix Youth Programs, we were seeing youth who were, you know, 13, 14, 15, uh, wanting to work, but, you know, sort of legally uh, not of age to, to start working. Um, and so we had a young group of people who were hungry to get out and get employment and experience. And then we also had uh, groups of people who were at home who wanted to stay in their homes, but weren't able to do the upkeep. And so we sort of married that, uh, that idea together. And so uh, one of the folks who was very helpful, a um, friend of mine named Ashley Linden, <clears throat> Ashley Linden. Um, and so both of us kind of cultivated uh, this idea into um, you know, we're at the stage of signing for it to be a nonprofit. Uh, and uh, a lot of things happened. Some things fell out with uh, organizations. But essentially, where we were was that we were now doing the outdoor stuff, uh, raking leaves, uh, stacking wood, mowing lawns. Uh, we had the push mower, so they weren't uh, gas powered. So right. youth were doing that. And then also businesses were hiring us uh, to do postering, to, to come at our events. Um, and, you know, very simple business model is that Future Roots gets paid, and then we pay the youth. And we we're paying the youth a uh, dollar and a bit, um, maybe even two dollars above what minimum wage was. Um, and so the idea was that you come in at 13, 14, 15, you know, whatever the case, um, you get work experience. Uh, we were doing first aid, customer service experience. And so, you know, if you're 13, and then you try to you start going to work at 15, 16, and you've got two, three years of actual work experience working with real people um, with certificates um, already. Um, mm -hmm. And you're now technically legal to start in the workforce. So we saw some good successes with that. Uh, but as I said, like it was at a point where uh, we were had all this equipment in our car, we didn't have anywhere to store it, uh, organization that was sort of helping us. Uh, failed us um and uh we just really didn't have a home so uh at that point uh, i made a decision not to incorporate it as a not-for-profit because i just felt like i had too much going on and i wasn't able to take it on i mm. do regret it a lot um at this point but it doesn't mean the idea is dead forever you know what i wanted to ask you about that so i've been so art pays me is not a not-for-profit it's a business but in a lot of ways I have social leaning ideologies and I'm always trying to think, how can I make this somewhat of a social enterprise or do I want to make this a social enterprise? But you, you have a lot of things on your plate. Like how do you find juggling all of these different ideas and things like that? Cause that's where I get lost. I get like, I barely have time to focus on things I'm working on. Mm -hmm. social stuff always ends up kind of falling by the wayside. Uh, do you have like a process that you use to keep all this stuff in track? Um, well, I mean, <clears throat> some of the things that I do is uh, I use my phone a lot to take notes in. Um, mm -hmm. And that thing is extremely helpful. Um, but, but in juggling all of the stuff that I do have on the go is um, I wouldn't even say that I'm so much as very organized, uh, but I make sure that I try to do things during the weekday because I understand um, self-care uh, and, and I understand that I need to make sure that I'm at least giving myself some time uh, for myself so that I'm able to do the things that, that, that I, uh, that I want to do. Then the other thing that is, is, is somewhat helpful is that all of the things that I do aren't, um, they're not outside of my character. They're not outside of who I am. Um, and, 
And so it makes it easier and it doesn't seem like it's work or it doesn't seem like it's another thing to do because it's just who I am and what I'd be doing anyway. Um, right. So a lot of it is, some of it is paid and a lot of it is not paid. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's not as if I'm taking on a whole bunch, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. that's just, it's just a part of kind of who I am. And that's like, if you think about, uh, if you ask a professional athlete, man, like you practice and you have so many games, like you're taking on so much, but like, that's just who they are. And so mm-hmm. that, that's just a part of what they'd be doing anyway, because they're a natural athlete, they're a professional athlete. And so, um, like I look at the same of like people in community who are doing a lot of, uh, community work and doing a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a part, it's all similar stuff. It's part of who they are and what they would be, uh, what they'd be doing. Mm -hmm. So I find it helpful, uh, to juggle, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of different things because a lot of them kind of mesh together and build on, uh, one another. Right. Right. And is that kind of, so you've won a bunch of awards for like stuff like you won the Dr. Burnley Rocky Jones award in 2018 and you've won Irving and Ruth uh, pink award for youth development and social justice. Mm-hmm. So with that, it's just like, like you said, you're just kind of naturally going with your instinct and saying like, this is, this is who I am. This is what I, this is me. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, it, 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 like I live with sort of the thought of like, it's, it's, it has to be, you know, my or our responsibility to ensure that um, people around me are doing well Mm -hmm. and that what, what I'm doing is, is going to be lasting, that it's going to affect generations of people that I haven't met yet. There's, there's kids who are going to be living in communities who may have similar or different aspirations than me, but like I know um, that the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff that I want to do is going to affect those kids and those people that I've never met or aren't born yet because this kind of stuff is, uh, it's transformative and it's bigger than me. Um, yeah. And and if I'm not going to do it, then who is? I just take it as that, you know, mm. if it's not me, uh, why shy away from it? If I'm not going to do it, then who's going to do it? Right, right. Exactly. So I don't know which direction I want to take this. I'm kind of like, I want to talk about um, ACCE, but I also want to get into some of this like um, social stuff, uh, like what's happening in, in the society. But, you know, maybe we'll start with, with what ACCE, ACCE is. And um, from that, we can kind of go more into like what's what's happening in society right now so yeah what what yeah. does that do what is that yeah so uh ace is uh so of course you can see behind me arts culture or arts community culture and economics um and so ace is a collection of uh 13 uh young black professionals from hrm uh, a mix of professionals community leaders business uh owners uh politicians um and uh we've all come together um, recognizing that to get like together, we can, we can do more, um, and we can, with collective impact, um, we can work to better the, uh, black community, um, in, in Nova Scotia. Uh, and so we've, uh, what we're, what we're doing is, so the arts, community, culture, and economics, those are the four pillars, uh, of our organization. And so those are the four things that we focus on, uh, within the black community. Um, and so, we, we were doing different, uh, different events, um, different social events, um, different socially conscious events, um, partnering with different organizations, um, and then uh, building on for different things that we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, I don't want to spill the beans on some of the things that uh, we, do, we do have planned, um, but it's also, I think, important to note that we are, um, we're self-funded, um, so we pay into this. So all 13 of us, 13 of us pay a monthly fee um, so that we have a reoccurring budget uh, that we're able to use, uh, and nobody can tell us what what to do with our budget and what to do with the money. Um, we are um, we will be registering um, uh, as a nonprofit, but we'll also have a for profit, uh, potentially a for profit entity uh, as part of the organization. There's a lot of different uh, skills and abilities um, that, uh, that that ACE has uh, within its members. Um, 
and, and utilizing that as part of uh, kind of what we want to do. But overall, um, you know, we want to work to, to, to better the experience uh, for uh, Black Nova Scotians. That's dope. Uh, and I, I'm interested in the independent aspect too, because it's like, how can I put this in the right way? Uh, like sometimes you see like some, some organizations, you end up competing so much for that government funding or that attention or whatever the case may be. Mm. That you, you, you could lose track of, of things in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's a point I want to make on that, actually, because you just you literally just reminded me of something uh, and I don't want to take this off track. It's actually on track. But with what you said, it made me think of something around um, how the system is sort of uh, and I don't know if it's intentionally, but the system is set up um, so that we have different um, different black organizations all sort of uh, trying to get the same money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you think about um, uh like um, uh, cultural, uh, the black cultural experience. We have the Black Cultural Center. We have um, the Africville uh, Museum. We have uh, Pier 21. We have, um, and, and so the, then those are supposed to meant to be the, the, the cultural hubs for, for uh, the black experience in Nova Scotia. And they do a good job. However, they're all fighting for the same amount of money rather than one entity um, that just gets the money. There's three separate organizations that all have to kind of go for um, similar pots of money. We think about education, we have uh, CASE, we have DVDLI, um, we have uh, ALI, we have An African, uh, ANZA. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and again, um, all focused on um, black education, but all going after same or similar pots of money. Uh, and I think that that sort of division uh, of the money creates a uh, division within uh, black communities who are, who are, are black organizations who are uh, looking to go for the same, uh, the same money. Yeah. I know this is a bigger topic in conversation, but like, do you think we would be better off if a lot of these organizations amalgamated? I mean, so there, there may be some people who may not agree with me, uh, but in my opinion, um, if, if, yes, I think that if some of these organizations did amalgamate, because the mandates are so similar, uh, the mm -hmm. goals are so similar, um, and it's all based around the same thing. Uh, and so if some of these organizations sort of came together and amalgamated, uh, I feel like it, it, it may decrease some of the uh, stress and tension of having to always go after the same dollars as another organization is make your case better than that organization. Um, and it would also show unification. Uh, and, and I think it might even speak more so to uh, principles of Afrocentricity. Uh, if we were, uh, there was one sort of uh, large entity that uh, housed all those same employees, but all just it's under one roof uh, yeah. rather than a bunch of different separate stuff. Um, it may or may not be a popular opinion, but I, I think that it would, it, would, uh, it would work. It would work well. Right, right. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I grapple. I, I toy with that too because I oh I I honestly think a lot of these organizations have their hearts in the right place, but sometimes I I wonder if we could be doing better, and and I, I you know I wonder what that would look like if we were doing better. So recently, uh, I saw some pictures pop up of you in protests and stuff like that particularly with the Christina Rawl, I'm um, Santina Rawl thing um, uh, related to excessive police violence and now George Floyd in the States and Ahmaud Arbery and um, the just Regis uh, Korczewski packet thing that happened recently. What do you, what are your thoughts on this issue? Well, you know, um, I think, I guess, before, so again, before I say anything, I just have to say that um, uh, what I'm saying, uh, although I'm a member of ACE, what I am saying may not necessarily represent the entire views of the whole group. Sure. Um, so, so with that being said, um, what I think is that, is that these, these actions, so the, the, the riots and the things happening uh, with George Floyd, these actions are 
inevitable um, because, you know, you can only be punched in the face so many times before, um, you, you know, you're not going to ask to not be punched in the face anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so I think that the response from, from society at large, um, is, is, uh, Martin Luther King said, uh, the riots are the voices of the unheard. Um, mm-hmm. and a lot of people feel like they're not being heard. And so in order to be heard, well, you know, we have to destroy some shit. So then you're going to pay attention. Um, and, and, you know, to bring it home here in Halifax, uh, a lot of people say that, you know, just because it happens in the States, like it's not as bad here. It doesn't happen here. Um, but like, man, it's, it's, it, it's bad. Um, and with, you know, with Santina Rayo, um, like that, that is just so interesting how people look at that because uh, here is a, a, a mother with, with a child in a stroller who just spent 90, she went to the electronic section, spent $90 um, and asked, asked to pay for her two fruits and a vegetable uh, at the counter. The electronics said, no, uh, you have to go to the counter and pay for it. Uh, and so she put them in the bottom of her stroller uh, and on her way to going to pay for them, she gets stopped by officers who are accusing her of stealing. And so any, any mother that I know who has kids, um, when you're out shopping, I have never, I've yet to see a mother who can push a stroller and a cart at the same time with their kid. Um, and so you put it in the bottom of the stroller to go pay for it. And so to get, uh, if, if that's the response uh, from police uh, to, to um, uh, all over two fruits and a vegetable, um, then like we've got some serious concerns, some serious concerns. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw that video and it, it was highly, highly disturbing. And I, I'm upset by this apathy that we tend to have here too. Like, uh, oh, it's Canada. Like, no, Canada's not above this. Canada has been doing shit to people for well, as long as it's existed. Uh, um, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's a little bit maddening to say the very least that people really don't think that this is a possibility here. I find that with this George Floyd thing, it hits different for some reason. I could be wrong, but I've had a number of white people reach out to me, be like, Dwayne, just checking in. How are you doing? And it's like, Yo. that didn't happen before. <laughs> yo (laughs) like yo man like the yeah like like i still like i don't want to say i regret watching it but like i felt like i had to see it um Mm. because i was like no there's no way uh so when i watched the video like it did something different to me um, and watching repeatedly over and over and over and over again, black men just being murdered on tape and, and the, the, the evidence, uh, to say that an officer choked out a black man, uh, you know, having a video of that is not to say, um, is not enough evidence to say that that happened. Um, mm-hmm. and what better evidence can you get than an actual video? Um, yeah. Like it, 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 I think that like it hit home so much more because, because it was so blatantly right there in your face and so preventable screaming, get, you know, get off of me. And then, um, to all of the other people that passed away, like, uh, at the hands of the police, it's people, people are just like, fuck no, like we had enough of this. Um, and y'all need to change some stuff. Or we're, there's not going to be peace until until things get changed. Again, I don't condone violence, um, but like people people want to feel like uh, feel like that they're being that they're being hurt, um, and it's 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 undeniable at this point um, around what had happened to him because there's a video of the entire thing. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, oh, we didn't see the whole video, or like, oh man, like. You know, we don't, we don't know what happened. Uh, we got to get all the facts. And they're still saying that. Um, the craziest thing that I saw was um, when they did the autopsy, um, 
they were they were saying essentially they were saying that he wasn't healthy enough to be choked out um, that he actually died from his health con- health conditions um, and so there's always like little sneaky ways that they're finding to kind of pick holes apart uh, and people will literally let their cities burn to the ground mm-hmm. before that you know, they admit that they were wrong and that there's systemic racism happening uh, within the city. You'll let your city burn before you admit you're wrong. That's, 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 that's hardcore dedication. I, f- I find it so telling that being called a racist has become worse than actually being a victim of racism um, mm. in a lot of people's minds. It's like actual victims of racism are like, yo, this is racist and you're being racist and people they they won't acknowledge it and it's just it's disgusting man um so I, as i i really feel like there's a change and shift in the culture based on the reactions i've been getting from people <laughs> but i've been largely silent other than twitter i've been kind of going off retweeting all kinds of stuff but generally i have been silent because part of me is like are we going to be doing this again in two months am i you know am i going to be mad in two months again uh am i going to be sad in a week it's it's um it's so complicated and also i'm not an advocate of violence either so you know i'm more like on that yeah let's talk it out, let's find a way to peacefully address this. But I, I can't be mad at these people who are fed up and mm-hmm. have, feel like they're powerless. So like, you won't listen to me. You don't like cat kneeling. So I'm gonna blow something up. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm hoping that we, society at one point admits that Ka- Kaepernick was right. Um, you know, like to kneel uh, peacefully, and that to be saw as unpatriotic and disrespectful to to athletes uh, speaking out, to being told to to shut up and just play mm-hmm. basketball, um, you know, and then countless actors and, and, and other celebrities uh, voicing to Beyonce performing at the Super Bowl, and that was too black, um, you know. At what point do you you know you got to stop? You got to stop asking. Like, at what point? What what's the right way? Because mm-hmm. now people are saying that this is the wrong way. So what is the, you know, like, what is the right way? Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Like, we've been in some meetings before that are, like, could you call it part of the establishment? I don't know. Maybe you could call it that, sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of. Sort of establishment-ish. And I also see you boots on the ground protesting which Mm -hmm. do you i'm kind of an advocate of both sides i think that both things need to happen i think we need to attack the top but i think we also need to be on the ground like what's your what's your thoughts on that you got to do both um because the people need to see you the people need to see you the people need to people need to be able to touch you um and and in my opinion like both is impactful because there's the visual representation. There's there. There's then you there being with the people, speaking mm-hmm. with the people, and doing that the road work that nobody wants to do. Yeah. But then also behind closed doors, talking with the decision makers and those in power to to to, to change rules and to change laws, uh, so that it's it's better for the community. Um, like I I feel like um, I I would be disingenuous um, if I um, if I didn't do some of that road work with the community, uh, I'm not saying that uh, everybody has to do it, um, but I think that both uh, both are powerful um, mm-hmm. because it also shows uh, those groups of people um, and those uh, um, those those in power that you know you are you're with the people um, you you the community, uh, you are behind the community and the community is, is behind you. Um, and so when you're sitting at that table, I'm not just sitting there as Dorico, I'm sitting there, uh, representing all of the people that I was just walking with. Um, so I I really think that, uh, a combination, um, of, uh, of both need to happen. Um, 
and they're and they're both important. I don't think you can name anything uh, significant that has happened in history where there has never been a riot or a march. Um, mm-hmm. these, you know, there's critics of these things and and uh, being called sheep and all of that kind of thing. Um, and we're not woke, uh, but but these these things do do work. But both has to happen, in my opinion. Yeah. Do you ever face criticism? I I've never, I. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know if people would say this to your face, but sometimes I'll see people like will message things or tweet things or whatever the case may be about like the motives of community organizers, uh, organizers and people like that. Do you ever like find yourself getting hit by that kind of criticism? No, um, nobody's ever questioned. Uh, and maybe, maybe not to my face, but I've never, I've never had anybody, ever since I've done this work question uh, my authenticity in terms of where my heart is um, or even question why I'm doing something. Um, like I, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm as transparent as I can be. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that that goes a long way. And I also think that it's, I'm not asking the community, like I'm not advocating for anything behind those closed doors that I, I don't know what it feels like. Um, or, or I haven't lived through. I've lived in public housing. I've lived through racism. Like I've been hungry. I've been broke. Like I get all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm walking with these same people. Like I may have ascended in my career um, and, and, and have some blessed opportunities, uh, but I still know what that feels like. Uh, and it's that sort of piece that, that, that keeps it going uh, is that uh, I can never get comfortable uh, and, and never get uh, complacent. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that uh, it's those sort of things that I, I personally haven't had anyone question uh, is what I'm doing uh, authentic uh, because mm-hmm. I believe I'm transparent. And, and again, like I'm, I'm there with the people and I think yeah. that's important. I'll choose the people any day. Facts. Um, I see like, I don't know if you, you saw what happened with uh, Virgil Abloh and, and some of the criticism that he's faced. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, basically people were complaining that he, he donated to some funds and things like that to support, uh, some of the protests, but people were complaining that his donation was very low con- compared to how much money he actually has. And, uh, he also was, um, very critical of damage some protesters did to his friend's stuff. So mm. like, and then I I haven't looked into it too deeply, but I've heard other black celebrities have kind of like stepped out to to like not to be somewhat critical of the, the protest. Mm-hmm. Like, see, that's an example though. Like, uh, that's an example of um, both both are important. Um, mm-hmm. If I was just black, if I, I don't say just black, but if I was black and rich, but I was never with the people. Um, and I just donated money that would, you know, people would question my motives. People right. would question, people would question what I'm doing. Um, and, and that happens all the time. And that's why I think like, it's important. It's, a, it's, it's extremely important to do both. Um, because nobody can ever question why you're doing what you're doing because the people see you, um, mm-hmm. the people see you, the people can touch you, talk to you. And you're not just some, you know, mythical person who just shows up, donates money and is never there. Right. Right. I mean, I can see that criticism, not only over the amount that was donated, but also like, you know, where have you been at all of the other times? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what would you say, like, is the hardest part about doing? Would you consider yourself a community organizer? Uh Man, I would think like a mix of a couple, like a community organizer, community advocate, like a community, some ways activist. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I'm like extremely radical uh, in terms mm-hmm. of like how some people are, but um, you know, I would say like a mix of those things. Um, and like the hardest parts, oh man, it's a good one. You got me here. Um, Man, I would have to say, like, it's a couple things. Like, one is, like, is, like, realizing that, like, when you run into a wall where you can't help somebody, Mm -hmm. um, like, 
that like eats me away. Like it eats me away. Like I lose sleep over it. Like I, 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 when I get to a point where like somebody's asking for help and like, I can't do it. And it's even more frustrating when, uh, it's, it's, I'm looking at what the government might be doing. And, and I have this person who's, who's doing this and, and the government law says this, like example would be like, um, uh, I was working with a young woman before, uh, who, who, who was 16, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, was, was being, uh, human traffic, um, and, and was involved in, in, in prostitution. Um, and, uh, uh, we had more than enough stuff that, um, the police could have stopped this, but the police actually told her that she was uh, 16 and was able to travel on her own um, and didn't actually need IDs. So she got on a plane uh, with like minimal IDs and minimal stuff uh, and, and, and went uh, and went and was involved in some stuff. And uh, yeah, like I, you know, I don't want to say too much cause yeah. people may know, but like uh, in, or even, uh, examples around like, um, uh, like, and again, this is, this is just my thought around it, but like where, um, somebody like a John paying for sex is illegal. Um, but then it's legal, uh, for, uh, like sex workers. Um, right. and I'll, I'll preface that part with like, um, you know, it's just a thought, like I'm not uh, criticizing anyone's uh, means of making money or, or that type of thing or, or, or work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but just the thought that, you know, may be helpful for uh, people who are looking to, to kind of help those sort of laws. Um, mm-hmm. But like another hard thing is like, it is especially like right now. So trying to get people to, 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 to understand, um, not not like getting them to understand like what it's like to be black but like getting them to understand like what it's like to be black like like <laughs> like, yeah. like there's there, like like white people are never going to fully understand what it's like to be black just how i would never fully understand what it's like to be asian or you know i'm i'm black and so i know what that's like um and so feeling like you're just like you're just talking to a wall like it, it's mm-hmm. it's 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 difficult um and then and then like just the i guess the last thing that you know i find difficult is just knowing that knowing that there's so many people um who are living in such difficult situations um and and knowing that you know and seeing uh government posts around X amount of million dollars is available for this. And I'm just thinking, man, like, like, you know, there's homies down the street who are just like, they don't have a fridge or a stove and they're living in public housing. But like, you know, we have $5 million to redo this community on the outside to make it look beautiful. But the people inside there are hurting. Mm. Um, and so like, I think the work, like this kind of work is it's just like mentally taxing, like, like extremely, um, it's a lot like to take on a process uh, mentally, like, especially man with like the things that people may kind of come to you with or open up, uh, open up uh, about. Um, and it's like, you know, uh, people are saying like, man, you can't, like, you can't save everybody, but like, why not? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, why not help as many people like as you can, like along the way, like that's like a big thing for me is I want to, I want to try to have as broad of a reach and as broad as a positive influence uh, that I can. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I, like, I don't want that to come off like as, as like arrogant in any way. Like I just, I just want to be like, I want, I want to, do good. Like, and I want to reach as many people as I can, um, and influence as many people as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, uh, like the job of like a leader is to develop more leaders who can develop more leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and like, that's just like part of the mission, like part of the game is just to help people. Like that's, 
it's tough though. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. And it, it and I get that struggle with your ego too, because it's like, is it I'm saying ego, it's not as like, do you so I I, I struggle with this. I want to impact as many people as possible as well. But then I, I, I step back and I'm like, what does that mean? What does that say about me as a person? And I beat myself up about it sometimes. But like at the same time, it's like, nah, like you want to be helpful, then you don't need to beat yourself up about it. If people elevate you as a result of it, that's, that's what they choose to do. You don't have to like buy into that. So, mm-hmm. um, congratulations for, for like what you're, what you're doing and, and attempting to do for the future. Uh, Appreciate that. I, uh, it's been a, man, it's been a long, I think it's been a long road. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Like, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, like you just mentioned, like if, if people want to elevate you, like that's fine, but like, I'm not. I'm not in this or I've never have I been in this for awards or mm-hmm. recognition. Like there's a lot of stuff that I do that I don't talk about because I don't need to, because I know and the person knows or the people know uh, what, what has happened. Um, if it so happens that I, I, I get an award from something great, then that just gives me a bit more of a, of a broader reach that I'm able to, to affect people. But um it's never been about the money and it's never been about accolades or recognition. Um, Mm -hmm. You focus on the people and the rest will fall in place. Yep. Feel that. So how, how can people support your initiatives and do you have anything you want to promote that's coming up? I have, I have something, but like, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention it yet. Cause like, I just need to, I need to lock a couple things in before I put it out there because it's kind of at a stage where somebody could just pick it up and do it. Um, so like there are some things that like I am planning something for, uh, uh, probably like October ish. Um, if, uh, if, uh, uh, it all, it all pans out the way that it, it, uh, it's going to. Um, but like in terms of like people, uh, getting in touch with me or, or, you know, um, supporting initiatives, man, like people just reach out to me in whatever way. Like I have a couple, people like on Twitter who reached out, like they're, they're interested in doing some stuff. Some people on Facebook, um, people email me like, you know, what, whatever way. Uh, okay. and if it's something that like we can do, then, you know, then we run with it. Okay. So drop your, drop your Twitter at and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, so Twitter and Instagram is, uh, at Dorico Simons, D E R I C O S Y M O N D S. Facebook is, you just search my name, Dorico Simons, uh, and it'll come up. Uh, and as well, uh, website is www.DericaSimons.ca. Uh, um, any one of those, uh, reach out to me and, you know, I, I'm not the person to not respond. If I can't do it <laughs> or I won't do it, I'll let the person know, but I, I always respond. Dope, man. Yo, thank you for this. I, I've been really struggling with uh, how I wanted to address this stuff i guess you could call it that and i i typically um i just felt like it would be silly to release an episode basically without digging into this because as an artist i think it's important that um what i do reflects what's happening in society or at least what's important to me in society and this is something that is i've been losing sleep over so um i really you know, I just needed to do this. So thank you for making that time. And you know what? I have another question. Oh, yeah, let's do it. If I wanted to say someone like me and a lot of the white folks have been wanting to do more, like what's your advice to that, to us who are like, yo, how, to do more? To, 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 to black people or to white people? You know what? It's, it's a different answer. Hey, yeah, that's a, that's a good <laughs> question. Yeah. I'll say to white people. Um, so I think that, uh, um, like for, for white people, like who, who want to get involved, like, I don't mean this in a smart way, but like Google is a wonderful thing. Um, Mm -hmm. we live, we live, the first step I think is, is, is kind of educating yourself, um, around the different topics around, uh, what's, what's going on. Um, and 
And like I've been saying, especially like this past week is like, I would rather somebody move with genuineness and love and make a mistake in saying something than to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we're not going to change what we continue to tolerate. And so, you know, in terms of white people getting involved is, is, is let's, let's bridge it this way is black people didn't create racism. White people created racism. That's a historical fact. It's not debatable. Um, white people created racism. White people uh, have benefited uh, uh, for 400 plus years through generational wealth and, 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 and have privilege because of uh, the systems that have been built uh, years ago. Um, and so when issues of race uh, come up, it can't just be uh, people of color and black people speaking up because you think about it, um, black people didn't create racism, but then black people have to speak up about racism. It doesn't make sense. Um, and, and like, it, black people uh, uh, speak up and, and white people have to speak up because it's actually white people who are contributing uh, these acts um, um, that are causing rifts um, in, in racial tension uh, in, in relationships. Yeah. And so uh, educate yourself, um, get involved, even if it's just showing up uh, to an event, um, have those difficult and tough conversations with uh, with your family members, uh, people that are close to you, um, even if they disagree. Uh, and, and then I think um, uh, doing what you can with, with who you are and your platform to elevate um, voices of people who may be marginalized um, or may have a different experience in you. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a responsibility um, at this point because we're, you know, as we can see in the world, we're way past uh, overdue. And so it just needs to be taken as a, as a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, man. Well said. Right. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Thank you for doing our pays me. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Cool. Peace. Thank you so much for listening to the art pays me podcast. Thank you to Lange beats for the theme music. If you got anything out of this show, Please rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. The more you do this, the more reach the podcast gets, and the more artists I can help learn to make a living at what they love. If you want to know more about what I do, hit me up at artpaysme.com or at artpaysme on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. See y'all next time.